Welcome to the Martin E. Siegel Theatre Centre here at the Graduate Centre CUNY and to Prelude 21, uh, Start Making Sense. Um, it is our annual um, theatre and performance festival celebrating the work of New York theatre artists and ensembles and it's hard enough in normal times to create work for the stage and for uh, spaces inside and outside but in the time of Corona we all are faced with exceptional challenges and uh, we are here to celebrate again the extraordinary achievements that come out of the New York theatre community. It is time, I think, and we feel, to start making sense to ask uh, questions. Why are we making theatre? But also how are we producing it and for whom? And uh, this is a great investigation again into the um, mechanics uh, of making art uh, in New York City and we also invited uh, theater ensembles from around the US from Detroit and Cincinnati, St. Louis and uh, Philadelphia, uh, New Orleans um, to join us and um, this will be an extraordinary look into uh, what is on the minds of artists right now. We also have uh, many panel discussions. Uh, we have uh, an award which we're giving out uh, to honor uh, uh, outstanding members of the New York theatre community, so I would like to all of you to uh, join in and uh, get an insight of what uh, is happening. Welcome everybody back here to a, a Siegel talk um, at the Martin e. Siegel Theatre Center, the Graduate Center CUNY, and it's my great pleasure and honor to welcome my colleagues uh, who are here in New York City, uh, representing the world, uh, the global thinking that we need. We all do know that problems like racism, uh, the climate crisis, homophobia, sexism, um, and uh, uh, class and race. It's not a, a local problem. It's not a national problem. These are global global issues and they can only be solved in a global way. <clears throat> and the field of theater and performance um, has taught right away uh, since uh, many, many decades actually. So the contributions of these institutions to the life here in New York City has been tremendous and, uh, and I think important and significant as a window into the world, uh, we have uh, with us here um, Ariana from the Royal Norwegian Council Council, uh, Rachel Cooper from the Asia Society, Jörg from the Great Goethe Institute, and Laurent and Nicole from the brilliant French Cultural Services. I think our colleagues from Quebec uh, will also join us later. Um, we could have had a much, much larger panel, but um, it's good to have a limited, uh, I think, a number of, of, of colleagues with us so we can really have a conversation of what a role these uh, institutions um, have played, are playing, and they might be playing. What are they thinking about? What has changed in their own countries and also here? Um, we feel it's of significance uh, to listen to the world, to the global uh, context. We collaborate with Penn, the writers' organization. They always point out that 95% to 96% of all books published are from the American, North America or from the British uh, publishers. Um, the rest of the 4%, half of it is German and French because it's supported by governments, but so actually one or two books arrives on the tables in the bookstores or in the homes of people from around the world. And that is wrong. We have to think away from that idea of insular thinking. Uh, it's more like uh, uh, the idea of uh, uh, archipelagos. Um, we have to think we're all together. It forms a landscape, but we are all connected. and. Um, and I think these uh, uh, fantastic colleagues that are with us here today are um, representing that role. So I'm really curious to hear how they are, what they are doing, the difficulties they face, and what they are thinking about, what they're dreaming about, like all of us, they are thinking right now um, about the future of opening, reopening, work, uh, and perhaps also changes have been taking place. So welcome uh, you all, and um, our program really is about listening and listening to you, so I apologize for the slightly longer um, opening. I'm here at the Siegel Theatre Center. Frank Henschke is my name, and we bridge academia and professional theater, international and American theater and performance. And for over 15, 20 years, my family have presented, I think, also significant work from around the world. So this is very close to us. 
Um, I'm going to ask you guys um, to introduce yourself and just say a few words about who you are and then also who you work for. And I would like to thank HowlRound, our great uh, host, the great uh, streaming service for nonprofit theater here in America, but it's also listened to around the world. So I think maybe colleagues of you guys uh, of the Goethe uh, and the French embassies around the world are, are, are watching you. So um, welcome, everybody. And um, Ariana, even so, you got just a booster shot today. You joined us. Tell us a little bit about you. And, um, and we welcome Taylor uh, down there and Jean-Pierre from the Quebec uh, Cultural um, um, Services who just joined us below. I don't know if they can hear us. They seem to be frozen by Ariana. Tell us a little bit about you. And, and your work. Sure. And apologies for any any mental fuzziness on my part. I've just been been boosted, as Frank mentioned. Um, I work as the uh, art and culture advisor for the Norwegian Consulate General in New York. Um, and in that capacity, um, I work with all of our partners on projects in the field of performance, but also contemporary art film and craft um, and the way that we work is very partner based and so there's a, always a local institution and or, or organization that we are working with and we also work very closely with our sister organization performing arts hub norway um, which is based uh, based back home so we work hand in glove with them to offer support for um, projects that have originated in Norway to make their way further afield um, to new audiences. Yeah, wonderful. And you're also based partly in the, or your colleagues in the Scandinavia house that you know, also represents Sweden and, and, and the Finland, I think. And uh, it's a great place here in New York City. Rachel, um, you are representing the Asia Society, a fantastic, brilliant, great organization we admire and um, and when people speak about the work of La Mama, of Alan Stewart, who was the first who brought international theater over, people will tell you, well, actually, the very first organization brought the puppet players and dancers over that were not from America or what we often call now the NATO countries, uh, you know, who art we seem to be closer than others unfortunately it was the asia society so it is an incredible uh, uh, institution so tell us a little bit uh, rachel about you and the asia society you are you mute, muted um maybe take uh, take the he earphones out again um it does yeah Um, no, now you are muted. Your muted button is on. Click it off. How about now? Yes, perfect. All right, Frankie, thank you so much. Um, I, I want to correct something, though. Yes. Uh, I just heard a wonderful lecture about Chinese opera, a theater form that is so complete, that has been in the United States since the, since the 1850s. So I, I think there are many forms of international theater from different communities that are just not on our radar screen. So one of the opportunities with this festival, with an international festival, is to retell this story so that it's not just the, the major institutions or, or even embassies that are part of the cultural exchange, important as they are, but that so many communities and organizations that are not quite so official are also doing really dynamic and important work. And I, I say this as an American citizen because I think in some ways, for me, Chinese opera is part of the American landscape. So all of these theater forms, as much as European theater is. Yeah. And, uh, and I know that Indian performance was also coming in early on, as was Filipino. So anyway, I just had to, to add Very that cool. international perspective. The Asia Society is only, you know, 65 years old. So it, it, it may predate um, La Mama, but there are others that predated that. And uh, exchange is really important to us and exchange in all the various meanings that that can hold. And we do a lot of commissioning and producing of new work but much of it is really a, a, some kind of a collaboration. And it, I would really say it is artist-centered with a, a, a very strong contextual base. 
So there's no reason that we wouldn't do something on vocal music from Java and India and Germany and Venezuela. Because I see that our role is connecting and that and if the artists are looking to do that, that's what we try to do as well. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. We'll we'll come back around. We'll come back around. Uh, but you. I'm honored to be on the panel with you all. Thank you, Rachel. Um, York, tell us a little bit about you and your institute. Yeah, thank you very much, Frank. It's again, thank you very much for having me at, at this panel. It's like it's a pleasure. I'm, uh, my name is Jörg Schumacher. I'm in New York it's like since last spring. It's like, so I moved here in April. I started my work in May. So I didn't meet everybody in person yet, which is A, my fault, but B, also the pandemic's fault, I guess. It's like, so it was a bit hard during the past month it's like for all for everybody and also for an institution like us as we depend on um, making personal connections between people just as Rachel uh, was pointing out it's like that's a it sounds like a very similar approach that we follow as a good institute as well it's like, so it's not only bringing Germany um, to to New York but also just like connecting the world in art it's like, and, and, and this is maybe I can elaborate on the art scene in Germany that we're working together with is an international one. It's like, so there is no such thing as a German, German art scene, neither in theater nor in visual, in the visual arts. And I can, can maybe give an example. It's like outside the theater world, it's like to, to illustrate that with a beautiful show with um, a Portuguese um, artist living in Germany since, I guess, 10 years. Her name is Rada Kilomba. She's at the Aman Foundation in a new, newly built, beautiful building in, in Brooklyn now. It's like, and that's very much part of our work. It's like to enable her stay in the city. It's like, and doing her exhibit. It's like, so, so th th this, I just want to like elaborate on, on how we work at the Goethe Institute. It's like, we're the German Institute. Um, um, uh, the, I think the title is like, we're the official German cultural Institute of the Federal Republic of Germany, but I'm not part of the government. It's like, uh, so we're, we're not, I'm not employed by the general consulate um, in this case it's like uh, who's representing the state relations it's like here in New York City it's like but we do operate to two-third is like with government funds it's like so this is a speciality uh, of the setup of the of the Goethe Institute in a way it's like uh, that we do have strong ties of course with other German institutions and with the German government it's like uh, but we're, we're like um, 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 well, um, it's good to note, I think there are over 80 good institutes all around the world. It is 150 system. even. It's like a, How many? 100. Uh, I was working in our communication department a while ago, so I think it was like 100, back at that time, 157 in 98 countries. Well, this yeah, is... But maybe, I hope none of them closed in the meantime, and I'm pretty sure they, I hope they didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. that's a rough figure. Extraordinary, I think, unmatched. And if I know also more or less the same budget, so this is quite quite, uh, quite stunning. So thank you, Jürgen. We'll come back to you. And now we have my, our two colleagues here from uh, the French Cultural Services. They are, I think their work is legendary um, here uh, in uh, in New York. They have made tremendous contributions, not only bringing theater artists like Nushkin, others, but also exchanges, uh, uh, also uh, uh, residencies and the great the night of philosophy that they started which was a night of discussions and lectures that goes on for almost uh, 24 hours so uh, maybe laurent uh, we start with you uh, to just to follow the the clockwork and um, tell us a little bit about you and part of it and so we leave a little bit to decode also but tell us a bit about your work Thank you very much, Frank, for the invitation. It's really great to be here this afternoon. Actually, if uh, there is one legend, it would be Nicole, because she's the legend. I'm not, because I'm here since three years now, and I'm the cultural attaché of the French embassy. And uh, obviously, it was fantastic years, but at the same time, it was very strange years. And uh, well, uh, let's hope it will be better uh, in the next month. Um, we are uh, part of a government, we are paid by the government, for sure. There is no uh, doubt about that. France has chosen a different way. Um, but in the same time, as you know, um, nationality is not uh, something for us. Uh, we are inviting all range of artists, be it uh, French or be it uh, living in France or 
be it wherever they are, if they have a connection with friends or whatever. I take uh, a good example of that, that we have created a, a very new institution, which name is Villa Albertin, and which aim to, um, to receive in residency in the United States uh, each year 60 uh, people all over the United States. Uh, 60, like six zero. Like six zero, yes. Um, for residencies from one to three months, and they are artists, they are writers, they are researchers, they are designer, maker, well, low, all range of disciplines. And nationality is not at all a, a subject for us, um, for these residencies. Uh, it's not an entry point. And I, I want to underline this because yesterday we have been very honored actually to, to award uh, the uh, Nigel, um, Red, sorry, Nigel Redden, um, to commander of the Order of Arts et Lettres. It was That's yesterday great. night, it was a very moving ceremony. And he was reminding us actually that the first people he had invited uh, was when he went to a Festival d'Automne in um, 74, if I remember well, Nicole. Seven, 76. Six, and it was Michel Guy who was the director of the Festival d'Automne. Actually, uh, the production he has invited from that trip, uh, one of the three was a Chinese uh, opera. So it was very interesting because for him it was a, a kind of a way to, to remind that in France we have always, like in Germany, we are always open to uh, receiving artists from all over yeah. the world. Yeah, it's, it's, it's something which is in our DNA for sure. In our DNA, yes, and it's um, something that has been proven over time. And Nicole, yeah, hi, but thank you, thank you, Frank. Um, hello, everyone. So my name is Nicole Berman Bloom. I'm program officer for the performing arts here. So I've been. Um, in New York for more than 25 years now. Um, so I have many stories to tell if you want. <laughs> um, good ones, um, some um, always good ones, but um, all different. So the artists that we, um, we are supporting, helping, um, they, they have different backgrounds. I mean, for the performing arts, uh, different backgrounds and different styles, aesthetics, and um, as, um, Ariana said we connect with um, uh, with curators, U.S. partners uh, throughout the the country. Something that um, Laurent may um, add is that uh, the cultural services in New York is the headquarter. So we work with uh, nine additional control services um, uh, located in Chicago, Boston, uh, Washington, uh, Atlanta, Miami, um, Houston, New Orleans, uh, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. So it's um, it's a very large country. So we, we have to keep um, What's very important is to keep the contact with American curators, the professionals, to um, to be able to answer their uh, their request, but also to answer the request um, from uh, the artist. So it's um, it's always moving. It has been uh, moving before the pan pandemic. It's it's always in movement, but uh, and right now it's uh, what's interesting is that um, we're exploring new models of um, presentation, new models of connection, and um, so that might be um, one subject, one topics of uh, one of the topics of the discussion. Yeah, one. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much, Nicole, and. Um, and uh, for the contribution you have made, and everybody else, also the Goethe is really, I think, uh, so also the language courses, and um, they are focus on literature, focus on discussions of a, you know, really seeing theater as an art form and insisting on it um, is a, a great, great contribution. Um, we almost, uh, I think, had Taylor and Jean Pierre uh, with us in a little spaceship, wherever, what galaxy they are cruising, um, they might be back. Let me say a few words about New York City. New York City um, is a city of artists, as in there's no other city in uh, the US that has so many artists living um, in the city than the city limits. No other city most probably has such prominent 
uh, artistic uh, leaders across all disciplines um, than in New York City. And, um, and they also are visible in neighborhoods. We yesterday had a wonderful talk with Rupert Beck at the Arts of New York City in the 70s, where the uh, panelists said that, uh, you know, you can walk around in the streets of New York, you will see an impact, uh, what people who live there and in the neighborhoods, it's uh, um, truly um, a significant um, difference. New York City is over, no longer a majority white. It's a diverse city. It's a city, an experiment almost for the future where people live uh, next to each other and they don't tolerate each other, as some people say, which is perhaps not the right thing, but they accept the right to be different. La trois de la différence, I think the French say, for very good reasons. And um, with all the complexities, it's a city where people talk to each other across disciplines and um, and but also as Tony Kushner the great playwright reminded us it's a melting pot that perhaps never really melted on so many levels on nations cultures class a race and others we of course believe that theater art and performance can make an enormous contribution and towards that towards the fight for uh, liberty the fight for freedom free speech democracy and uh, we had a little bit the ghost of some say also almost a fascism passing by and i think it's time for the arts to get involved but what shall we to do what's to and what to do is the very very big question um what we have now and um so i would like to ask you um how you envision your work um as a cultural service to contribute a, a kind of a global conscious to this and perhaps if we come to talk about a festival where it comes to um taylor and jean pierre can you hear us now Um, I'm not sure if we are hearing you. Um, they, they told me they were traveling there on the way to a residency. They are supporting in upstate New York, a new venue. So maybe I think we, we go ahead. So my question to, to everybody on the panel, um, how do you feel at the moment? How is, how is the reality sitting in your offices planning? In the time of Corona seems to be over, but it's not really... Um, so many things have changed. How do you react to it? What's on your mind? Um, what are you um, What are you thinking about? And uh, maybe uh, I don't know. Uh, York, should we start with you? Uh, with pleasure. Thanks for the question. It's like a, yeah, a good question. Like for, for us as, a, as an institute, it's like we're, we're back open. It's like for the public since June, I think. It's like and since September. It's like we're, we're we're like here. We're based in Union Square. One block east um, uh, uh, with a library and a public space for discussions, movie screenings, and and, and exhibitions. It's like, and we're, we're open. It's like uh, five days a week since uh, Labor Day since September. It's like, uh, and we're happy to be back and receive our audience back in here. I do have the feeling there's a great like in every performance and every cultural activity I attend, be it be one of ours or um, and, and of course. Uh, one of the, um, uh, and of course, it's like one of the multitude of the things happening in the city right now. What I experience is great joy and happiness about being back on stage. I'm, 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 I'm still surprised. It's like so, it, it seems to last this joy like very long. It's like so. I'm not not saying I get, I'm getting tired. It's like, but every performance or event I, I attend, it's like people take the minute saying like, thanks to science for the vaccine. Thank you for coming. It's like we're happy to be back, and there's huge applause already at the very beginning of the shows. It's like, and that's beautiful to see. On the other hand, I do feel it's like that also people and artists and institutions we're working with in the city right now, they're some of them are hesitant it's like to to return. It's like so. What, what, what my from the limited time I'm uh, I've been here in the city. It's like, but what I what I see now is like there's two different worlds. Of the one people is like who are desperately uh, desperate to return to in-person activities, and there's the other half, not half. I, I don't want to. I can't say it's like in, in, in terms of numbers. It's like, but there's another group of people is like who for another while remains hesitant to join. Uh, we, we play it by ear. It's like we're happy to be back. It's like, uh, but we're also every planning we do is like. Uh, is like kind of a double planning. It's like, oh, we have a plan B for switching back to fully to Zoom uh, or to other activities. And maybe uh, lastly, it's like uh, our, our uh, 
uh, last point I would like to mention is like, and, and maybe this is something that that is what what the other members of the group are also like working on or, or trying to maneuver through, as we do. What are the true perspectives for hybrid activities? I do feel the Zoom only things. There is a big tiredness. It's like I do feel it's like are there an understandable. Like, like um, uh, if, if, if the situation allows, I do feel people want to meet. It's like, but as a, particularly as a foreign cultural institute, I'm interested in the online component because it gives us so much more opportunities to bring in like people for a limited time without flying them in, without like having people for a one day event, just like for a longer, longer period. Uh, um, and the only experience we can throw in for this was like in, in our storefront that we had, like we, we have a storefront window, um, uh, one block east of Union Square. So again, we had a hybrid performance between Cairo, Berlin, and, um, and New York with Adam Hafez, um, uh, uh, an Egyptian choreographer. It's like a, and that was our first but very uh, promising experience of, of we can create something new in terms of performing arts with these hybrid things, something happening in the room, but people standing outside because nobody that was before the vaccine, even nobody um, or we couldn't have more than 10 people inside the building at that time. It's like, but kind of also connecting the three venues. So this is something yeah, something you are interested the in. The idea how to combine the, uh, the, the digital experience we now gathered um, with live performances. Rachel, is the Asia Society different after the time of Corona? Are you thinking different? about programming and your, your job as cultural diplomacy? You know, um, so so I have, my, my title is actually culture as diplomacy. And I differentiate it because cultural diplomacy sometimes has has a, a certain connotation which I've tried to, to jump over. Yeah. And get more active because I think culture, and in, in this case, when I say culture as diplomacy, I really mean culture as, as connection. I, I don't just mean diplomacy in a governmental sense. Um, but I would say, yes, one of the things that's been very exciting is because I am working with artists that are, you know, arguably part of half of the world. Um, I can connect people because of the online. And, and as you did, Frank, um, make those connections and then hopefully realize other projects and, and uh, programs that we can either do in person here or that we can um, share globally with our colleagues across the, the globe. And I think it's really important to, to see that as a, a real change. So we, in terms of, we have a 258 seat theater, and when we do larger work of scale, I, you know, I will work with either Lincoln Center or Carnegie or BAM. You know, there are larger spaces. That's if it's in New York. But now we have the opportunity also of connecting in a whole new way, and that is that is in fact a change. And I think so from from the like I have a concert on with an Iranian singer uh, next Saturday. And that will be a hybrid. So we'll have about 100 people that are socially distanced in our theater, but we're, we're freely streaming it out. Um, so more and more, I think that, that those kinds of opportunities or ways that the work can extend or amplify becomes more important. Mm -hmm. Looking at what is best for the work. I mean, I agree with you that um, being in person is there's no substitute for it, but it doesn't mean we can't add on. Hmm. Ariana, you and your colleagues, what are you what what are you planning? What's on your mind? What are you thinking or fighting about? Um, well, um, I mean, I. We work a bit differently since we don't have a venue of our own and don't consider ourselves to be a, a curatorial or programmatic body. Um, so a lot of our work is uh, partner driven. And um, so we have been um, just undertaking through the last year and a half a lot of conversations 
uh, with those partners to try and identify how how we can both support them through all of this uh, all of these ups and downs and change and and help make ends meet and the same with the artists that they work with um, so we we have sort of moved out of the um, the the primary or that's the wholly digital programmatic sphere since it seems to be um, there seems to be sort of dwindling interest uh, there, at least for some programs. And that's that's something that we did a lot of when uh, our partner organizations were, were closed. The uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs um, adjusted the consulates um, and embassies funding schemes such that they could better support these digital and virtual programs. Um, but now we're we are we're following um, the movements of our of our partners as they begin to take the first steps into more physical programming, um, and are sort of eager to see how it goes. We have our the first big program that we have supported that will be in person is coming up just next week, and um, that's a a new commission by Gibney Dance by the choreographer Alan Lucien Oyen, and that will be presented at the Joyce. And we're we're very excited to see um, the first uh, fully physical uh, performance we have in, had in quite a while. Um, and my understanding is that the uh, the response thus far in terms of of ticket sales has been good. So, fantastic. And you're following. <laughs> the great Martha de Graham dance company at the Joy. So that's great. Uh, to uh, my French colleagues, um, you already are implementing changes as Villa Albertine. Tell us a little bit your new thinking, also the experience. We have also been in contact during the time of Corona, of course, and we have supported also our Siegel work wonderfully. Um, but tell us a little bit about the new world, the new your new way of thinking, what we can expect from the French cultural services. Um, yes, uh, actually, the, the, um, the biggest outcome of this new thinking is definitely Villa Albertine and, and its residency program. Doesn't mean that uh, uh, we abandon at all all of uh, our other tools like Face Contemporary Theatre and Fused for the Contemporary Dance and Etant for Donné for Contemporary Art, which are fantastic tools which supported both American institutions and French artists to develop collaborative project to develop exhibition and whatever. These tools are definitely at the heart of what we are doing and they are here for a long time. But definitely we we, we spent this COVID time to, to think about what we were doing and our, our um, goals and and also the world evolving around us. And, and we, we decided that um, we should really focus on residencies. It's something that we wanted to uh, to prioritize, and we were prioritizing it since a long time, but definitely it's it's a great answer to the time we are going through. Why? Because <clears throat> um, I, I'm from the simple to the more complex part, or not complex, but uh, obvious also. Uh, no way that we, we invite again uh, artists to perform one or two times in the United States and then go back. I mean, it's, it's totally insane. We don't do that. We cannot do that anymore. Um, but also, uh, during all this COVID time, we have heard so many times that we were needed to support artists, we were needed to, um, yes, they were in crisis, they were, it's true, but the fact is that it's the other way around. We need the artists to support us, and we need their thinking, and we need their, their view on the world and the future, and we need their, their dreams, and we need all that to rethink our world. So our wish with Villa Albertine is, is to put them again, uh, if need be, if it was needed, to, to put them at the center of our talks, our thinking, our, our reflection. Uh, they are leading us in, 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 in tackling all these fantastic issues, well, fantastic in a bad way, I mean, but we, you know, we are going through yeah. issues and we need their, their feedback on that. It, that's an important point, actually. We, 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 we need them, and how can we, how can we provide, provide a space? Nicole, um, 
Yeah, no, um, I mean, part of the Villa Albertine, what I could uh, add um, um, to what Laurent said is the, the artists, I mean, it's in performing arts, contemporary arts, they're all very, uh, still very interested. I mean, not still, but they're interested in what's happening in the United States um, at different levels. It, it, it could be... Uh, for, for example, all the movements uh, from Black Lives Matter that um, that uh, were um, happening uh, last year, the um, the impact on the the society, all the changes. So they're um, part of the Villa Albertine since um, it's resi exploratory research residency. They they come to. Um, to learn to know more and to um, to um, think um, about what's happening and um, and uh, develop their work and compare with what's happening in in Europe in general, not just in France but in Europe in general. Otherwise, um, regarding tourings, I, I could I could say that I'm still receiving in an enormous amount of requests uh, from French artists willing to come to the U to the United States and show their work. Mm -hmm. They're all concerned by um, the ecosystem, of course, uh, not um, not the aware of it. So they're trying to uh, adapt their work um, so that it's, it is less expensive or to adapt um, their text to uh, and revise their text so that they have uh, an English version of uh, their work so that it could be um, interpreted by um, or performed by um, American actors, for example. So we're working, we're helping them a lot um, with was translate helping supporting the translation of their their work, for example, and um, having them uh, um, for a couple of uh, weeks in residence uh, to develop their work. So that is still um, um, it, it it is happening, and there there is no. Um, um, it's still pretty high dim demand, I, w I would say. No, I um, think one to one here, it's a, you know, such a mythical cultural landscape, and I feel uh, many uh, American artists, some of them, you know, are so 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 recognizable in film and music, and uh, and so, but so little actually travels in between. So I think yeah, it's an imp real importance to the to myth, but also what's happening now. Yeah, what's happening now is of interest. Yeah. My question really uh, also to, to you guys, and this is also a reason for the panel, um, we are thinking to getting involved uh, uh, in, in something like a summer festival. We just wrote that Lincoln Center might be organizing something. I heard that this morning, but more for New York artists. I feel um, what makes life so interesting, uh, so significant, why art um, is um, of... Uh, um, a mission that cannot be fulfilled by perhaps by any other media to spend someone's some time in someone else's shoe, as someone said, but taking your own shoe off first. And we need your global presence. There are great festivals around the world in Asia. When we talk in our Siegel talks, you know, to in in uh, in Malaysia and then in, in Indonesia, festivals are part of daily lives. In India, in Germany, we have the Ruhr Festspiele, Theater der Welt, the Berlin Festspiele. France has perhaps the most famous uh, festival. In Avignon, um, Thiago Rodriguez, who just performed at BAM, will be uh, he is heading it. New York City doesn't seem to have a big global summer festival. Perhaps not, all of North America doesn't really have it. Canada had for a while Montreal, the Festival Transamérique, all shrank down. Um, what do you think if such a festival would happen? Would you participate? What would you think? What should people think about, what should organizations think about, what is of importance, what should be different, and every city needs its festival, it has to be there for um, its, uh, uh, its, its citizens. W what are your feeling from your from the longer or shorter time you spend here, what do we really need, what is meaningful, and how could such a festival look like? So if this is really an international festival, we might need to shake it up a bit. And I, I think one of the old models was that, that um, 
American presenters went off to a country and, and sort of selected stuff. And, and a newer model, a new old model, would be where, where artists in countries are more involved with the curation. And one thing that might make that a little bit more uh, focused would be to take some thematic ideas. Uh, you know, an obvious one is, is climate change and sustainability. You know, another one would be, would be um, taking a historical or indigenous perspective. And then the third thing I'd throw out is um, the idea of migration and refugees or people who are in, in that status. Because I think we've got 80 million people who are not represented in a country right now. So if we're really going to be international, I think it's pretty important. I mean, maybe immigrants go into migrants. I don't know, but the idea that people move around and in every country represented on this panel, even though it's a, a pretty Western looking panel, um, everyone has some movement of people and some different way of telling that story. So I think, I think in thinking about what is international, it would be really important to be able to see if there's some way that, that um, each, each area of, of the world, however we define that, has a way to be, to participate. And that, that includes those in New York as well as those who need to come out from outside. And it probably includes some hybrid thinking. York, yeah. Yeah, I would just like to add on that a second. I particularly like the third part of the, the what, what, what Rachel just said. It's like, so that would be something I, with my limited experience in, in the city yet. It's like, but if it doesn't exist yet, it's like, this would be something. It's like, I, I, that, that sounds new and intriguing to me. Um, for what Frank said, it's like, and I think you said it in the video at the, at the beginning. It's like, so you, you, when you introduced the whole festival, is, and now you introduce the, the idea of like the, the, the prelude is like, and, and now about like a global festival. It's like you were asking, it's like, uh, why should we do it? How should we do it? And for whom should we do it? So these will be also the three questions like uh, for the global festival. And, and I don't know, maybe because of the specific situation in New York City that so many things are coming in anyway. It's like, I'm, I'm just wondering if this might be a reason for um, a global festival not existing yet, it's like because kind of like every, like for many groups in, in, in Germany, it's like a, with our help or without our help, it's like there is connections, it's like in the in the in the theater and performing arts scene, it's like and stuff is happening. So kind of maybe New York is a global theater festival even without having one. That's interesting, though it's already there, just in a different form. Mm. Laurent, yeah. I, I totally agree uh, that uh, New York in itself is a global theater festival. And, and uh, I would say uh, New York in itself is also a fantastic scenery. Um, and, um, but perhaps the, the, the opportunity I would see is that it's a global, great global festival. Uh, inside walls. I mean, most of these uh, production are uh, in theaters, in venues dedicated to performing art. And, and I have seen less perhaps than somewhere else um, the public space to be used for artistic intervention. And I would say what we have seen as an answer from the city and from the state also was great experiences actually. What we have done was, was great. And I think it's really opening a way perhaps to our thinking for a festival, specifically in summer. I mean, when we think about for who are we doing such a festival, uh, it's, it's kind of obvious question so that we, we need to, um, to think of a festival which can unite people and, and uh, which can work on inclusivity, which can work on imbalance of access to culture. 
And public space is a really, really good answer for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would I would say to complement uh, complement uh, that that um, we need to, I mean, part of the fe global festival, um, we need to reach out uh, to go where to places where you have people who would never go and see the work that would be at the Lincoln Center or even at um, or within Manhattan. And, um, and because the period has been also so difficult, um, um, there are many bias, um, many prejudice that are still um, very present and may, and may be even bigger um, and we have to be careful about that and go with the artist or um, places where uh, it would where it is not expected uh, to be. So to meet new people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that thing. Like important, important, really important points. Um, Ariane, well, from your your experience, also and from Scandinavian experience, what, what and from your time here, you've been here so long. Also, what what do you observe? What do you think is needed? Um, I I definitely like the the idea of potentially activating public space a bit more. I love what Performa has been doing with this most recent biennial, um, and yeah, I think for. For us, for at least the way the way that we work, is that um, we want uh, artists that are living and working in Norway, whether they be Norwegian or residents of Norway, um, to be able to participate in the conversations that are happening uh, here in in New York. And I think that certainly if there are some of some of the, the themes are absolutely relevant that Rachel mentioned um, mentioned earlier um, and if there are some ideas that uh, we can rally around um, yeah I can see that working quite well um, yeah yeah I mean, the great Norwegian artist artist Vega Vingard whose impact on the Coaching of the land and the European protocols has been tremendous. He has never been able to show his work here in New York City. A major theater artist. We had him at the theater for a discussion and a talk, which he also doesn't like to do that. His work has not been short, and I'm sure that the New York experimental scene would react as strongly um, as the Berlin scene. So we are missing out on something. And uh, just from our previous panel, I just want to say what people said, people felt. Um, there should be family entertainment that uh, somebody can go with your kids to a puppet show. There should be theater for uh, for young adults, for teenagers, which doesn't really um, exist. It has to be affordable. It shouldn't be more than 30, 35 uh, dollars. It should also, that our colleague from the Bronx, feature local artists, a very significant artists, but not even known in Manhattan itself, but they are world class. Artists, because they're from Puerto Rico, they are not really, really on the screen, or the songs they sing are not the ones you hear at Carnegie, um, at, uh, at Carnegie Hall. And, um, and also, that, uh, that Gregory Moshe said to have small companies who do tremendous great work, the Kortowskis of this world, and they are out there in small spaces. It doesn't have to be BAM shows, right? You like that small, interesting work, but still to create a place where people say, This is of interest. And, um, and we point to it a little bit, and it's not often great companies come to La Mama, but we don't really know about it. It's comes and yeah. goes. And I think, I think yeah. for us, I should also mention that um, a lot of the work that we, that we like to support is also not strictly performance-based, but um, opportunities to allow artists to exchange knowledge and, and ideas and just create for, a, for them so that it's not so much that they're dropping into a festival or a single performance and then flying right out, that there's an opportunity for a little bit more engagement. Staying, slowing down. Rachel, you wanted to say. Yeah, I just want to jump on to, to what everyone has said, really. Um, and it's, 
I'm just going to go back 30 years when I worked on the LA festival with Peter Sellers, which was focused on the Pacific Asia region. And it was very similar. It was about, in, you know, activating public spaces, making art available to people, sometimes unexpectedly, sometimes not, but, but not necessarily in, in a closed theater, although we did have some things that were there. But one of the most impressive and, and powerful parts was that we had the artists staying in dormitories and their ability to spend time with each other and to share work and to find time so that it wasn't just drop in, drop out, but there was real exchange was really powerful. And, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm lucky enough to be old enough to see that 30 years later, it still has impact. So I think I think um, what everyone has brought up really speaks to this idea of making making art available, and and people realizing they happen on it and they something hits them. So so taking that opportunity, I mean, I the last time I remember an international festival here was was when Marty Siegel did it in in uh, ninety one. 91 and then of course nigel did a lot of nigel and joe at, at bam and and i mean I, I don't mean to just mention them la mama so many people are what hasn't happened with our work as well as it should is that we're connecting and and the uh, the advantage to a festival is it makes a, it makes a place a destination there's a there's a kind of cumulative uh energy that happens when you bring people together. So, so that's why I would advocate for, yes, New York is already pretty international and some of this already happens, but, but there's an amplification that happens when you're all together and when you're able to share. And maybe it has residencies sort of as, as uh, you've all brought up so that that, that ability to, to be in exchange is deeper. I think if I can add something for the, the, the outcome and the lasting outcome of such a festival is should be very important. And it's why for, for us, we, we would see very well that it fits with one of or two of our residency that we would host at that time. I mean, it would be a great, great uh, um, opportunity for an artistic residence in Villa Albertine to be part of such a festival. And it would make a lot of sense. Yeah, I was um, I was thinking oh, we should, um, I mean, it's a suggestion, I mean, we should combine uh, our efforts and bring also uh, Little Amal um, to New York. I, mean, right. the, uh, I don't know if you have followed um, the project of uh, the walk yeah. by Little Amal, this um, giant uh, puppet who is trying uh, Basil Jones, to, uh, American yeah. Hanson Company, yeah. 80, 80 cities in um, from different country living in Syria and coming, going back, going through, yeah, I think it's 80 cities um, throughout Europe and going to, um, to England. Um, so <laughs> that's... It's an interesting project, and um, bring him here. We are friends with him, and that's a great idea. I wasn't thinking. Yeah, that yeah. That walk through just the neighborhoods of New York. It would combine just the sensation of that giant puppet that is a little girl and mm -hmm. a refugee girl, and that marches by foot and is received by communities locally mm -hmm, mm -hmm. they wanted. Yeah. Um, Two weeks ago, she uh, the puppet was in Bobigny in. Um, um, it's it's suburbs of Paris, north of um, north of Paris, and um, you had the parents, the the children speaking with her, and of of course all the the community of artists uh, working on the project. And um, then she, I don't know where she went after Bobigny, maybe one more city in France, and then uh, England. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the question for York, I know you were also in Ramallah, I think, before. I don't know what other stages you are, or your, your colleagues in the Goethe Institute go around the world. What are what are examples, what you hear, where people say, this is actually, this was great, this worked, um, an impact a cultural institution has on a city? Okay. 
Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I mean, what we call in, in German, it's called Gastspiel. So it's like a, a, a tour of a, of, a, of, a, of a stage play. It's like a, when I look back at my time in in, in Ramallah, it's like a, the Schaubühne had a huge impact. It's like a, in, in the Palestinian cultural scene. It's like and it, it was a, because it was a theater of a of a size and a play with Hamlet. It's like that that resonated with. Um, the society and they took and and, and they took the time is like to stay for like three weeks is like a, and really um, manage is like to establish is like a kind of collaboration what we also had is like in the last session that this might be the the key for a successful festival is like be it in in in, in Ramallah is like or any other place is like a, um, that's actually what I was wondering from the from the last round and which which is something I definitely will take home is like that I, I do believe also for here uh, and and what, what what we learned about west coast is like and other festivals it, it we should all invest in, and then also from the french colleagues with the residencies invest in allowing people to collaborate rather than presenting things it's like so the co-production is the more interesting part we have experiences with both in the, as a German cultural center. It's like a, but I, I do believe it's like that this, like for our mission, is like to bring people together, it's like and to create something new. This is the more exciting path. And I would also like to connect it to something that was said before, but I don't know who. I think um, Nicole was speaking about translations as well. So that would be a question, it's like also to my fellow panelists, it's like what your experience is with, I mean, a collaboration and a, the process of thinking about what to put on stage is like is also very much affected to what what you what 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 um, texts are available. It's like a, and and my, my question is it's like what your experiences in 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 the U.S. is like and with other festivals is like is translation support something particularly for our stages? We need to rethink. Is this working in the or running in the right going in the right direction? Maybe. Frank has a take on, on, on that himself. It's like, do, do you feel it's like that the theater makers in the U.S. is like are familiar with other theater texts it's like from around the world, from Europe, it's like, but basically from from anywhere else? Would there be more interest in other pieces? It's like, so this is these were the two things I was thinking about. It's like when I listened to 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 the other panelists. It's like so the emphasis on collaboration and co-production, and also it's like. How do we get our sources available? It's like a, for, for as a fundament for for um, the creation of new pieces. Mm -hmm. Maybe Nicole and Laurent and Rachel, you answer first about ideas of translation. How does it work? It's a different language. Well, Frank, you, you could answer that because we have partnered and we are still partnering a lot on Caribbean um, voices. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, um, just to, to mention that translation is key, actually. Um, definitely, the universal language or surf, the, the, the only universal language is translated. <laughs> and and, and we, we need that. And, and for sure, um, such a festival could have a, a strong uh, input on translation, allowing um, texts, voices from uh, from everywhere in the world to be hear, heard in New York. So it's yeah. a good point, George. Yeah, we, we collaborated on a project together on Caribbean, French-speaking Caribbean islands. And it turned out, which we didn't know, we made a little bit of theater history. It was the first time that anyone had ever put up a festival of French-speaking Caribbean uh, islands, like four of them. Um, we had uh, together here um, in New York. It's shocking, especially how big and huge the Caribbean community is. It is, some say, the largest actually um, in New York City because also Jamaica um, falls into it, English speaking, of course. Um, but the big idea of translation is, I think, the right one. It's a good question. A director yeah. translates also on stage the idea of the playwright. The player writes words that are translated, and then you guys, in a way, also translators of diplomacy or bringing something from another place and um, and to find a new meaning or additional um, meaning, local meaning to it. And I think this is uh, perhaps also a great mission of such a festival to translate uh, what 
people are thinking around the world, that we are out mm -hmm. of tunnel visions and that we are listening um, globally and, um, and uh, also get inspired. Like musicians do listen to music from all around the world. Painters mm -hmm. look at paintings from paint all around the world. Theater, especially in the US, is a bit because of its unique, uh, uh, highly commercial uh, uh, nature. It's, it's a little bit tougher. So German plays have no chance. I mean, there are small companies like the play company that put on Schimmel Fanny after we did a reading or, or others, and we work together. Um, Nicole is very successful, most probably the most successful in, I know in the US who gets French work also translated and done. Um, if we would produce for very little money four French plays in the, within a festival, they would run a repertoire. Everybody would come. If uh, the German, you know, if you guys would help or some, find some money to do four plays from Berlin, from the Gorky, we had the Gorky with us. If they would be produced, and it, everything is complicated in the US or in New York, or maybe if you have a little bit of money, you can produce, but nobody. Um, will um, will really uh, uh, produce anything. It's so hard to make theater people work, create, and then we think at least we do our own work and do this with our friends. And Britain is so uh, overpowering, and so there are almost no foreign um, Rachel, yes. I, I just want to um, think about the word interpretation. Sometimes translation is fine, but sometimes interpretation is the appropriate word, because um, so far I'm thinking, when I did a Wyan Kulit, which is the shadow puppets from from uh, Java, Java, and we had simultaneous translation because it's made up on the fly. You have to have someone very good who can make that work, but it is doable. So each form has has you know you have to find the right way to make that uh, interpretation. You know they're not all straight plays. Theater is so varied that it's, you know, having contextual strategies has to have different um, different avenues depending on the form and the theater piece that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, uh, I, I would say that it's a collaborative work. Um, when um, we worked on, the, on translating um, um, a play, for example, we make sure that the uh, the writer uh, comes um, and participate um, at the table uh, with the actors, with a director. It might not be the director um, that will um, that would um, develop the work, but at least the director. And it's all these people together who work on the text. The the language is not a barrier. There are differences, but it's not a barrier. So it's it's together that they're working on the translation. And there are um, many questions. It's true that um, uh, some um, some words might be difficult to uh, to translate, but they some are interpretation or um, or. Um, juxtaposition of something that is close to what is happening in the other country. So, um, but it's uh, usually they're all, they're all very interested. And uh, what's interesting from um, the playwright is, uh, I remember one playwright, Fabrice Melchior, who heard um, his um, work in English, and uh, he was so happy to hear new, um, new sounds uh, from the text translated into English that um, uh, he, he was he was happy that the text was not his text anymore but a new text <laughs> and um, that that sounded uh, differently in um, in his uh, ears and uh, brain. So there was a very interesting experience. So uh, yeah, there, mm -hmm. there is work to do there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think um, we all should meet again, maybe also with a larger panel, and uh, Rachel is right, you know, it looks a little bit, um, uh, NATO, NATO countries got together, but these are the ones who we have context to who react, but we have to reach out and we have to make this a global, say where Africa, Latin America, Asia is represented, but it's easy, we have done that, we can do that, and um, and also, as I said, you know, there's this coalition of theaters of color. Fifty of them are in the city here. You know, we don't also have to look at BAM 
to get into BAM and into, you know, St. Dan's Warehouse as great and beautiful as these places are. There are the 20 CUNY theaters, 21. So perhaps we can find and build a coalition and change and have public spaces and also create a theater performance for the people who we called for, or everybody does call a hero, the workers, the bus drivers, the nurses, the people, the construction workers in all the five boroughs. What do they see? Who cares about them? You know, I think we do. And especially I think in the global world where art also has a different standing so we can bring and make a contribution to this great city and also a country that has given so much, I think also to the world that we can uh, bring something in. Um, Taylor from, from Quebec said um, that also, also artists from Quebec, uh, you have been very busy and active developing new work during the lockdown and uh, their work actually needs to be showed. Uh, they want to travel. They are so close to us. Canada is, you know, uh, the neighboring country and they're better known in Berlin and Paris than they are um, in New York and they are excited perhaps to join an initiative by the Siegel Center and our fellow you guys and, um, and they would be thrilled to, to collaborate and also um, bring ca Canadian colleagues um, and their work uh, to a lot of native work, also indigenous work that is happening there. And we also would like to take this moment to acknowledge the Lenape people upon whose land we are gathered today, as we always say, and we pay respect to them and their ancestors in the present and past, but also in the future. So I think there has to be um, um, a new approach and perhaps this is something we can bring and often it is cultural exchange that also brings new ideas and I think this is something we could do together if we find a way and if there is a need for it. So um, I, I would like to thank you all for participating. We could go on, up, I think, much longer. We could have had a session just with one of you. We could have had a session with all the 15 other institutions who are at the moment not with that, but it's a baby step, but it's good we did something and we added it. We were thinking, should we do it in our festival or not? I said, of course, let's just start and having a public discussion and uh, and here you and I look forward to seeing you all. We are trying to get a, a live prelude party together in two weeks um, in a space, a restaurant, if it worked out, the restaurant which we planned didn't pass the gas inspection and it got canceled. Um, but we will do that. And then hopefully we can um, also talk over a glass, wine, beer or tea or water of it. So again, thank you, York, Rachel, uh, Ariana, Laurent and Nicole and uh, Taylor and uh, Jean-Pierre who are listening in and somehow the connection didn't work. So um, it was very important to hear from you. And I think the impact of your institution is tremendous. It's significant. It's, it stands for the bigger world, for the global world that is here and for realities that exist next to the New York reality. And we need to be reminded, learn from it, and also enjoy it. It's all about imagination. And we can imagine a better life, a better city, a better democracy. And then art is also uh, our uh, our uh, our. Uh, team member in achieving that and we need we get something from them because they are not only in the moment they anticipate the future as Rancière the great French philosopher always said and this is why we need to listen to artists and they help us to create meaning and adjust to the new world that we are in. So thank you all and I hope you forgive me that it's a, a short one but it was so meaningful and for me and I really really we are honored that you took your time and energy. I cannot imagine how many thousands of Zoom meetings, especially you guys had in cultural services. But I would like to say thank you in the name of the theater community, also of New York City, for all you have been doing and will be doing. It's significant and it's being part, as Marty Siegel always said, you're part of a civilized world. Thank you. Thank you, Frank. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.